My name is Deron Campbell. Again, I'm the Director of Community Health Programs with the Nova Health System. And who do I have with me today? My name is Chris <laughs> Miller, and I am the Partnership Manager at iThrive in Charlottesville, Virginia. I think it's important to engage community members wherever you are. So if you've gone past the point of, I have an idea and you're at the point of writing the, the proposal or you're at the point of recruitment, do not think you have gone beyond where you need to be to engage community members, right? Engage them wherever you are. It's wonderful to have them at the table starting out but it's as advantageous to have them anywhere along the pathway of research. Up into the point of you've collected all your data, you know what the results are, how am I gonna get it out to the people? Invite, if you're, you're at that point right now, invite them in. Invite them in that for the dissemination of it. How should we go about doing this? I completely agree, um, but I would like to start at square one. Okay. How about, I don't know anybody that likes uninvited guests, right? We don't like them knocking on our door. We don't like them coming to dinner unannounced. So I don't think community members, but once you come into their community, uninvited, unannounced, and not, and them not understanding why you're there and what you're doing. And that's just a respect and comfortability thing, you know, that's mm -hmm. creating a safe space for both the researcher and the community member. And it is showing someone that they are of value even before you sort of denote that or place that expectation because that's technically what you're doing in the research project anyway. So um, yeah, I would like to start by not being an uninvited guest and making it awkward. Like work on building that relationship from the beginning and understanding how valuable the community member and their perspective is to what you're doing. I agree. I would encourage someone to just understand how important and valuable trust is, period. We never, you know, oftentimes in our processing or understanding of what we're trying to do or what we're trying to include in this, you know, example, we're talking about community members, we're trying to increase their presence, trying to increase their proximity to these conversations and, you know, to research. But at the end of the day, you know, trust is something that we feel as early as our childhood, right? Uh, we create trusted relationships with our parents, with our environments, with our schools, with how we learn. Um, you know, trust is necessary in order to really push and promote our experience. And so just in understanding how valuable trust is to you um, and how you employ it in your daily process or experience, um, someone can take that little iteration and then transform that to the community member also so that you understand why it is important that you are building trust and creating buy-in and you know creating a secure and safe presence versus just coming in and bulldozing <laughs> um, someone's thoughts and ideas or delivering sort of an intervention or plan that no one ever asked for so um you know trust is more important than you think so just think about that first you know, lollipop that you sucked and how much trust it took to do that. You can, <laughs> you can absolutely understand how important it is for a community member to trust um, your approach, your perspective or what you're doing um, when it comes to research. Mm -hmm. I, I would, I completely agree. I would say from a researcher's point of view, uh, um, be tr become trustworthy, right? Become the type of person that someone can actually trust. Be humble. Learn about your community as a as a as a disease or as a um, as a location, and learn about the location of where you're doing your research. Was it a health system or a medical center that has a past that is um, has treated people differently? Did the town where you do your research have a past where the people from the medical center participated? So know your history, be humble, be trustworthy.
I think it can um, assist in building trust. Elevating trust, I think, um, depends on the intention over time and how you, um, you know, intend to lead something, intend to incorporate community, how, again, how valuable you make them feel a part, as being a part of the process. Um, and we are going to have to be intentional with engaging community members as researchers, as scientists, um, in the understanding that we are building a better future um, that incorporates things like trust and respect and mutual accountability and um, confidentiality and safety um, as standards in research. Uh, but we're not there yet. So I think that we should continue to work on the relationship, incorporate the community member, and you know, make sure that they feel valued with the intention that we're contributing to a better future in research where we should have a lot of these barriers removed mm -hmm. through good intention. Be transparent. Yes. Um, do what you say you're gonna do. That's kind of about building trust, mm -hmm. right? And about being trustworthy. Um, it doesn't happen overnight and it may never happen, right? But again, if you have that goal in mind of spectacular research, research that um, resonates with the community, research that um, is, is inclusive, then build, spending time to build the trust, spending time to build relationships, inviting people in early is all worth mm -hmm. it. I agree. Right? I agree. We're focused on, you know, building a better future. For more information about iThrive and Team Science, please visit our website.